in this segment, I'm going to take a look at the standard toolbar, which is found up here at the top of your workspace, basically just underneath the drop down menus. And a lot of the tools that are found on your standard toolbar are also found in the drop down menus. And so we've already covered um, in different parts of this video uh, many of these tools. And I'll just highlight the tool names and I'll review some of them as it seems appropriate. So starting on the left of the standard toolbar, we have New Design, Open Design, and Read from a Floppy to Sket. Then we've got um, Save to your hard drive and uh, right to a floppy disk app. And I did a good job of reviewing and showing how to use those tools in one of the first segments of the video, so I won't bother to, to show a, how to use those again. Uh, the next tool we have is the print option, and basically this is how you're going to print your run sheets. It'll take you to the print preview options, and you can decide how you want to view your design and print it out. Now next to that, we've got the cut, copy, and paste. And you'll notice that cut and copy are gray right now. And whenever something is gray in a design, it basically means, or in your embroidery software, it means that you'll need to do something first before you can use that tool. And in this case, I can't use the cut or copy tool until I first select an object in the design. And I would need to use the select tool. So I'll just make sure I have my select tool turned on. And I can either click to select an object. Um, or I could drag a box to select what would be you know, multiple objects. Now that I've got all of this um, scroll work on the right selected, you'll notice now that the cut and the copy features are also available. And So for example, if I choose cut, it'll remove all of those objects from the design. And it actually puts them on an imaginary clipboard, which I could then use to paste the designs back down. So um, I could paste that object and put it back in the design. I could even paste again and have a, a second copy of it if I wanted to. So that's how cut and copy work. Cut basically removes something from the design. Copy makes a copy of it on your clipboard but does not remove it. And next to cut, copy, and paste, I have the undo and the redo buttons. And so, for example, if I use undo, it'll get rid of the um, it'll take, I guess I moved those objects. If I go undo again, it'll get rid of the second copy of those objects. If I said undo again, it would um, remove those again because that was the when I had cut them out. And if I say undo again, it'll put them back to where they were before I cut them out. So undo is like going backwards um, one step at a time for the changes that you've made in your design. And the opposite would be redo, which will then go forward through the steps or the, the transformations that you may have you know, recently done in your design. So if I say redo, it's going to cut that back out again. Undo, puts it back again. So now next to undo and redo, we have our zoom um, option. And basically, this tells you you can go to a specific zoom size. So if I chose from the menu 200, It'll zoom in on my design at the ratio of 200, so basically twice as large as the actual embroidery. Um, and I could choose, for example, 100, and that'll take me to the actual size. And I also have my mouse uh, set up with a scroll a wheel in the middle of the mouse. And when I use my wheel, my artwork, my design will scroll in and out. So if I scroll up, it goes in. If I scroll out, it comes back. But that doesn't tell me a specific percentage. I don't always know exactly what um, size I'm looking at my actual size of my embroidery. So that's what this is for. You can find out what's it look like at a, actually look at at 100% or whatever. So now next to the zoom um, option, we have unselect, select all, and invert selection tool. And so um, just as an example, um, if I choose select all, everything in the design gets selected, all objects. If I choose unselect, it lets go. If I drag a box and select, for example, all of these objects in this right-hand scroll, and then I choose the invert selection tool, it unselects the objects that I had selected, and it selects all of the objects that were not selected. So selected. So that means um, 
it's a way of switching what you are selected becomes unselected and everything else becomes selected so you can switch your selection and I can click on it again to go backwards so it, it's um, each time I click it it'll invert the selection and if I just don't want to select I can use the unselect button you can also by the way when you click on an object that will select it and if I just click on the empty desktop it will unselect it okay so next to the selecting tools we have the show and hide tool and again they're currently grayed out um, so basically what that means is if I want to use them I need to have something selected first so I'll go ahead and drag a box and select this right hand scroll and so now you'll see the hide objects tool has become available and if I choose that now it hides all of the stitches and objects for that right hand scroll they're not actually removed from the design they're still part of the design they're just hidden from our view they're not selectable they're not editable um, but if at any time I could click on the show button and it'll bring them back and shows all objects so that can be really helpful when you're working on a design that has multiple layers and you're just trying to see um, something that has embroidery on top of it you can simply select the areas that you don't want to see and hide them now next to that we have a bit of a traveling tool and so this for example will help you travel through the objects of a design and the options are to jump to the start of the design or go previous object or go previous stitch or we have go forward to the next stitch or go to the next object or go to the end of the design so if I choose the beginning of the design it automatically selects the very first object in this design and if I choose the end design it automatically selects the last object in the design. Um, I'll jump back to the beginning and then show that I could jump to the next object with these this arrow here. So it goes through and each time I click the option, it goes to the next object and to the next object and to the next object. So that's a way that you can easily see uh, travel through your design to see what the order of the objects is in your design. And you can um, go backwards the same way by to the previous object to the previous object to the previous object now the other two options in here rev, um, relate to actually editing and selecting stitches and that's something we haven't really talked about in this video yet um, but we've reached the time where it's sort of time to start talking about that so you'll notice I'm just gonna um, divert for a moment and talk a little bit about the left hand toolbar which I'll be covering shortly in the video Right now we're set on what's known as the transform tool. In other words, my arrow allows me to click and select an object. And once I have an object selected, I can move it or resize it. And when I do, what's happening is I'm, I'm selecting objects. And the opposite is here on the left hand is edit stitches. So now before I start editing stitches, I'm going to use my undo, undo, undo just to put that back now I'm going to choose the edit stitches option and what I'm going to do is zoom in very closely on this design and show that when I have the edit stitches option turned on I can actually mouse over and notice what happens when I come over the stitches it highlights the stitches and I can actually select I'm going to select this exact stitch right there and so you can see um, just as an example once I have a, a stitch selected I could click and drag and move that stitch to a new location I can also insert stitches and delete stitches and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment but um, just to continue back along the standard toolbar so I've selected a stitch now and the option is go to the next stitch go to the next stitch go to the next stitch or go to the previous stitch so that's what this traveling toolbar is all about and just continuing along with the standard toolbar next to that we have some viewing options and the first one is show stitch marks so if I turn that on you'll notice that it, it gives me um, a nice little circle around every single stitch in the design every single needle pen penetration of the fabric is highlighted with a circle and I could easily select 
any one of those stitches just by clicking on it. Now the next option is called show up to cursor and I'm going to go ahead and click that and you'll see what happens. So show up to cursor basically says show me all the stitches that have already been stitched up to my cursor which means up to the stitch that I've selected and it basically hides all of the stitches that come after that stitch. So if I zoom out you can see that I had selected that stitch and everything that was prior to that stitch is not or is shown and everything that would show after that stitch is hidden. Now if I click on the option again it'll show all the stitches. So um, just to do that review that one more time I'll zoom in closely and this time I'm going to select one of the stitches from the underlay. Then I'll zoom out and I'm going to choose that show up to cursor and you can see that it took out all of the stitches on top and it just shows me the stitches up to my cursor. And remember, I have the stitch selected. I could move it if I wanted to or whatever. Now, when I click on this button again, it shows me all the stitches in my design. So that's a different way of viewing your designs. So you got the show <coughs> mark, show stitch marks, show up to cursor. Now the next one, show filled outlines. And this is going to be something that um, because I'm currently looking at a, a Jeff file that I had created, a stitch file that was from one of my um, workshops, I don't have any filled objects and this is just stitches. So what that means is if I, I'm just going to use the window drop down menu and go to the untitled design of the star that I'd been looking at previously and perhaps what we'll do is just select the outline of that star and move it over. Um, so notice when I move it over, um, the option is show filled outline. So if, if I turn that on, it puts an, a sort of like a colored shaded area behind my stitches. I'll zoom in a little closer and then turn it off so you can see when it's off, it just shows the stitches. When I turn it back on again, it shows the stitches, but it also shows a bit of a color to represent where the area that I filled in is. So that's what that's about. And I, we didn't see that when working on the butterfly design um, because these this was just a Jeff file uh, that I didn't create using the artistic sewing suite. There's no vector, um, you know, filled objects with colors like that. There's just stitches. So that's why we don't have this tool does nothing for us on this design. Now um, next to those viewing tools we have our slow redraw feature and so maybe I'll just zoom out to look at the slow redraw and um, I'll zoom in a little closer. So something like this. Now if I choose slow redraw it gives me first of all I have the speed option and I have a slider that I can choose how fast do I want it to slow redraw. And then basically I have a start and a stop option. So if I say start, it starts sewing. And it actually started sewing right at the stitch that I had selected because we were in stitch editing mode. But if I zoom in on this, you can see that it's actually sewing my design. Now I could slow that down to a very sort of slower, you know, well not that slow, 1200 stitches per second or like 1200 RPM or I could speed it up. So that's your ability to decide how quickly you want to see your slow redraw work. Now when I push stop, it's going to complete the design and I can just close the slow redraw window at any time. So that's your slow redraw option. And the last tool found on the standard toolbar is your design information. And when you open up this, the, your design information, you get the window that, in, that includes all of the things that are specific to this design. And so you can add information like the date and the fabric. Um, you can put in some summary information like the customer's name or give some keywords to help you find designs later on. Like maybe I could put butterfly or scroll in here um, under your yarn. You can It tells you information about the thread that you've got. And um, <coughs> excuse me. Anyways, I've, I've reviewed uh, the design information in a previous segment, but that's one more way to access that design information is through the standard toolbar. So that's a quick review of all of the different tools and functions found on the standard toolbar.